Got it on Stadium, Braun Kratz, Krasinski. We had Ken. Now let's go to our guy, Jesse Rogers from ESPN. And Jesse, we had you on recently. We got to double down. <laughs> this is quite the shakeup and quite the timing and really even details that I didn't know. Like they were on the field yesterday, didn't even know that they were getting canned. I guess they hadn't been told yet. So give us what you got and then we'll follow up. I mean, a lot of it is what Kenny had to say, to be honest. I don't know what the tipping point was for Jerry to pull the plug yesterday, right? Game two of a random series in August instead of right after the trade deadline or right at the end of the season. I don't know what that tipping point was. And in some ways, the firing of both guys is very shocking. But for any other organization, it would be very normal. They failed miserably in this rebuild. And because of that, you lose your job. In fact, Dayton Moore lost his job in Kansas City last year, in part because they weren't advancing Al Avila in Detroit last year. So the three bottom teams in the AL Central have all turned over their front office. So, like I said, in a lot of ways, it just kind of makes sense. But for this organization, it's very, very surprising. And just kind of to you know, play off of what Kenny had to say and AJ had to say, it just feels like in general, this team operates at like 75% capacity. And I might be being generous. And what I mean by that is at every level, it's not just um, one area, the manager, uh, player, player development, player acquisition, analytics. It feels like while other teams like the Rays or Astros are working at 110% capacity, the White Sox are more like 75 or less. And, and again, that just encompasses everywhere. And so it, like you guys, I'm surprised in some ways that they're staying in house if they do in fact promote Chris Getz. But when I saw the end of that press release, like you guys said, um, if he wants it in place by the end of the year, that means he has someone in mind and most likely it's internal. And my final thought is this, whether it be Dayton Moore, Pedro Grafal, Chris Getz, I didn't buy into this last off season, this idea of hiring from a losing organization I mean, there are good people that work in losing organizations. But now that I've seen it up close for a year now, whether it be Pedro or again, Dayton or Chris Getz, there's probably something to people that are around winning every day and around winning organizations every day. And they know what it looks like. And in any of these people, if they're hired, there's none of that. There's none of that. I joked all year that if there was a change, go hire the security guard down in Tampa Bay for the Rays. He probably sees winning more than than the White Sox or Chris Getz at this point. So that's my feeling. I would like somebody that has done or been around some recent winning. So what I see the White Sox missing is accountability. Are they bringing in accountability with these two guys? And to me, I think it's from an outsider's viewpoint, it's Jerry keeping people around. And so when you want when you're always like never firing people, the accountability aspect is like you have to be able to be accountable to other people and telling other people, including Jerry, you're wrong. And that's why I thought AJ would be a great GM. He doesn't want the job. So they moved on to the next. But are these next two guys, are they accountable enough? I think Dayton Moore is. I played with Chris Getz. But does Jerry, will Jerry allow these guys to, or is it more of a Jerry thing? And it really doesn't matter who he brings in. Well, let's at least give credit that Jerry actually held some people accountable for the first time in decades, at least at the front office level. So he saw the dysfunction. Maybe he read it in that uh, Keenan Middleton piece who we still, I still think the best thing he said in that piece is shit rolls downhill. And that's exactly right. Maybe Jerry kind of realized this is dysfunctional and we need to make a change, but like you said, is it really making that big of a change when you're hiring the guy that worked under Rick Hahn and Kenny Williams, that learned under Rick Hahn and Kenny Williams? So it's a weird thing. Like Kenny, though, I give everybody a chance. Maybe there's some incredible ideas that Chris Getz was never allowed to implement because he wasn't in charge. So, of course, you give everybody a chance. But on the surface, I'll go back to what I said. I would have liked to have seen someone that was around winning more recently but to your point, at least they finally held some people accountable for this failed rebuild. I'll give them that much. Jesse, I, uh, obviously you, we've been around the White Sox a long time, you and I both, and you covered the White Sox when I was a player and, and we've known mm -hmm. each other for a long time. Kenny's been there for over for 30-ish years. 
Rick was there for over 20 years. And yes, Jerry finally held him accountable. And was it the Keenan Middleton interview? Was it Lance Lynn on our show backing up Keenan Middleton that finally opened Jerry's eyes? We'll never know unless Jerry talks, which Jerry doesn't do a whole lot. Okay. When I was with the White Sox, and you'll back me up on this, Ozzy and Kenny, it's Kenny's fault. It's Ozzy's fault. We're going to argue, blah, 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 blah. Right. Then, it, then they get rid of Ozzy and they bring in Robin. Okay. And then it's, they promote Rick to GM, Kenny to vice president, whatever his title was. Right. And they're like, okay, it's going to be different now because Ozzy's not here. And then it became, well, Rick wants to do this and Kenny wants to do this and Rick and Kenny and yada, yada, yada. And they're fine. And we even heard it this year with the burger trade. Right. People are like, well, Rick made the trade. No, Kenny made the trade. No, Rick. No, who really made the trade? Okay. And then from people that I've talked to, they say that Getz as the minor league field director development, whatever the title exactly is, director of minor leagues, he was always trying to do things and Rick and Kenny wouldn't let him. Right. So now he has all these grandiose ideas that Rick and but he learned from those guys. So it just seems like from the outsider, again, you're there way more than I am, but mm -hmm. they're looking at it like it's just more of the same shit. Right. It's just going to be yeah. another like, oh, well, the Gets got the job because he blamed Rick and Kenny and Jerry finally saw it because Keenan Middleton talked and Lance Lynn talked. And then, oh, well, he has all these great ideas because maybe Chris Getz has. And again, this, these are just things I've heard and, and I'm not putting facts on it because I don't know. But because yeah. he gets somehow got Jerry's ear and was like, well, I have all these grandiose ideas, but Rick and Kenny won't let me do them. So now it's like, oh, well, I'll try Getz's ideas and see if they work. It, it just seems like more of the same retread. And if you're going to blow it up, like we've talked about on the show, you got to blow it up all the way. Yeah. For me, yeah. from an outsider, you got to, you got rid of Rick and Kenny, fine. But you got to go field coordinator, minor league director, whoever, right? And start over and let the guy at the top hire his people all the way down, not bring in another guy that has been there for seven years. Yeah, like you said, it feels very circular to do something like this. You made this bold move firing both executives, and then you just hire the guy that learned under them, not to say he, he doesn't have some different and maybe better ideas, but this is about sort of risk-reward and maximizing your situation. You have a clean slate. Like I said, go out and get the best lieutenant on the Dodgers, the Astros, the Rays. People that have been around winning and see it every day, stop operating at 75% capacity. I, I think there's some truth to all of that. You go back to those hirings after Ozzy. I mean, it was clear they wanted a manager that would kind of fall in line. Let's face it, Ozzy, you know, sort of went to his it went he went his own way a lot of times, but it was successful, at least for a long time. And so look, from Robin Ventura to Ricky Renteria. Now, Tony was a departure, and I don't think Rick or Kenny really loved that. But then back to Pedro Grafal, these were first-time managers that certainly the front office could, I don't want to use the word control, but have their finger on more than a Tony La Russa, more than an Ozzy Guillen. And that didn't work either. So it's just going back to what I said, operating at, at less than capacity in a very competitive professional sport and it doesn't feel like it's going to change a lot if they continue with internal hires unless Getz or someone else is very special and we don't see it just yet. I'll give them that chance to be that way, but it doesn't feel like they're maxing out, maxing out a situation where they could start over and start big with someone from the outside. I, I agree, Jesse. I know you're a Cubs fan, but as a White Sox fan, I want Chris Getz to succeed, right? Okay. You have to get that in. <laughs> yes. Did you hear my – did you hear my – theory, I guess you would call it before, when I started digging in this morning into the whole transaction, why now? The, Tony La Russa is back with the White Sox. Strange timing, okay? This this thing happens. Tony Tony and Jerry are best mm -hmm. friends. Tony gets in Jerry's ear and says, hey, you know, it's time for a change. It's not working. Blah, 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 blah. Well, guess who didn't want to hire Tony La Russa? Rick Hahn and Kenny Williams, right? right? They wanted someone else. He says, right. well, you should fire Rick Hahn and Kenny Williams. Okay, Jerry's like, okay. And then he goes, well, who, do, who should I hire? Tony La Russa, on the record, has said Dayton Moore is one of his favorite people he's ever been around in baseball. So guess who? Boom, right? Guess who's yeah. best friends with Dayton Moore? Chris Getz, right. right? So it's like, it's all, and again, yeah. this is like seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, but it's like seven <laughs> degrees of Tony La Russa getting his revenge, right, for Rick and Kenny not wanting him. And again, this is all speculation. Just if you read, if you start digging around on the internet, you start finding all these weird coincidences, I guess you can call yeah. them. I mean, is there any, has anybody dug into like, the timing and why this happened now. And, and, and maybe Tony La Russa still is pulling the strings, even though he's not the manager anymore. 
Oh, I don't think there's any doubt that Tony still has Jerry's ear, whether it's an official capacity or not. We didn't, I didn't need to see a tweet today. As long as Tony is healthy enough, he's talking to Jerry. It might be still daily, you know, as, long as, as soon as his health came back. So I don't doubt he has his ear. It doesn't have to be in any official capacity, but it could, it could point to why the timing um, happened yesterday. I, I suppose you throw Tony in the mix. We don't know exactly how that plays out. But the bottom line is, Tony's been in Jerry's ear. There's no doubt about it. Um, it, it Maybe in a more intense capacity more lately as, as Tony got healthier. I don't know the answer to that. But look, Jerry, it's not like Jerry is, is, is friendly, I don't think, with all the new, new age executives and even owners. Like he's an old school guy. And that he goes back to Tony La Russa the first time around, as we all know. So, yes. That makes a lot of sense to me. Now, how much power or say Tony has, I don't know for sure, but we know he has his ear. I think we can be safe in saying that. Hey, Jesse, so last time we brought you on, which was the first time, I was like, oh, I can't wait to get into some Cubs. And we ran out of time because of the damn White Sox just stealing the show from the actual playoff contenders. So yeah. we're going to step aside if it's cool with you. Quickie two-minute break, and then we'd like to sure. get to Cubs with you for a few minutes if that's cool. 